Hey, what's up, class? Welcome back. Another episode of Math One Distance Learning with Mr. Mason. So we have been working on linear equation word problems. So these are word problems with two variables. In the beginning of the year, we were working with just one variable equations. Now we're working with two variable equations, equations that have an input variable and an output variable. Um, today, we're going to continue with that concept, but we're going to transition to something that's called a function. So you should have your notes in front of you um, called Intro to Function Notes. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna flip over to my DocuCam. Okay, so our objective for today is to identify and understand the concepts of a function and a relation. So we're gonna be learning two new vocabulary words. We're gonna unpack these. So we wanna be able to identify and understand the concepts of a function and a relation. Now, when we talk about a function, a function is an input output machine. You can see my diagram here. In fact, I'll put up this other one that we've been using. So this is a function right here. So you plug something in, it goes around, you do whatever the math rule is, and then it comes out. So an input output. The actual mathematical term for this is the word function. This is a function, okay? So we're gonna be learning about that today. So we wanna be able to identify and understand the concepts of a function and a relation. So when we say a function, it's just a special kind of input output equation okay so we've already been learning about input output equations so that's what a function is so uh, here's an example real simple so this would be like our upfront amount this would be our rate and then this is our output and so here's our equation our linear equation it's got two variables and we're going to go down here and put it into an input output chart so we've worked on these. Um, we've done several, several of these over the last class, handful of classes. So here, this is our X values. We're gonna plug numbers in. We're gonna have an input here and we're gonna get an output here. So for example, if I wanna plug in these four numbers, if I wanna plug in the number one, I wanna plug in the number two, the number five and the number 10. So I'm gonna plug those in one at a time and I'm gonna get a different output for each number. So if I plug in the number one, we've got one and then plus two times one. So two plus one makes three. So if I plug in a one, I get out a three. And then over here, we're gonna keep track of that in our T chart. So the input was a one, the output was a three. If we plug in a two, pretty simple math. Two times two is four plus one is an output of five. So we go ahead and list that over here. The input was two, the output was five. If I plug in the number five, that's my input. I'm gonna plug that in. I get two times five is 10 plus one is 11. So my input was a five, my output was an 11. I'm gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna input a 10, two times 10 is 20 plus one is 21. So I've got an input of 10 and an output of 21. And remember, I've also used the analogy of a candy machine, right? So a candy machine, you have to put something in to get something out. So um, down here, you can go ahead and fill in this little box here. So a candy machine, so an input output or a function, it's like a candy machine. The amount you put into the machine will determine what you get out of the machine. It's an in and out. You put something in, you get something out. And this is the concept of a function. Now we've been using input output, but like I said, the, the actual academic word is the word function right here. So an input output equation 
is actually called a function. So we're gonna start transitioning. I'm not gonna use this phrase quite as much. I'm gonna be using the phrase or the word function. Now let's talk about a function. So there's our, our input output chart. So here's some review concepts that we've already covered. Um, in a function, we have an input variable. That's usually the X variable. And this is used for plugging in values into the equation, plugging in amounts, right? We were plugging in to the X. We plugged in a one, we plugged in a two, we plugged in a five, we plugged in a 10. Then we also have the output variable, which is usually the Y variable. And this is, uh, it represents the output, the Y variable, the, the total, okay? The total when we're done calculating, after calculations, it's the output, the total after calculations. Okay, so functions have an input and an output. Okay, now, there's a new, new word, the word relation. So this word relation, when we're talking in math terms, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. I'm gonna explain what this means in just a moment. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these numbers from up here and these are, um, these are partners, they're pairs. One goes with three, two goes with five, five goes with 11 and 10 goes with 21. So when we take those input outputs and we keep them together in pairs, we're going to write them like this. And this is how you write a relation. So one partnered with three, two partnered with five, five with 10 and 10 with 21. When we plugged in the one into our function, we got a three. When we plugged in a two, we got an output of a five. When we plugged in a five, we got an output of 10. And when we plugged in the 10, we got an output of 21. And when we write it like this, I forgot the little bracket over here. You need to have a bracket on both sides. When we write it like that with brackets, this is now, now called a relation, okay? And the reason it's called a relation is because there's a relationship between the two things. You can see the word relation here is kind of like relationship. And what we're saying is we're saying that there's a relationship between one and three and it's the same relationship between two and five, five and 10, 10 and 21. When I plugged one into my function, I got a three. When I plugged two into the same function, I got a five, an output of a five. When I plugged five into that same function, I got an output of 10. When I plugged 10 into that same function, I got an output of 21, right? We use the same function back up here. We use the same function on all the calculations. So what do they have in common? What's their relationship? This function is their relationship. And so we call this down here, when we write it with these brackets or braces, and then we've got parentheses, these are the pairs. And these are called ordered pairs, an ordered pair. That's a pair, right? Like a pair of shoes, pair of pants, right? Comes in twos. So we, this is a pair, here's a pair. That's another pair, that's another pair. And when we put them all together, we call it a relation. Okay, all right, so now, um, what does this have to do with anything in real life? Okay, so let me um, go to the next page and I will give you a real life example of a function and why it's important. So we're gonna look at a real life example of a function and, and why it could be helpful or important, okay? So I'm curious if any of you know what the, sorry about that. I'm curious if any of you know what base jumping is, okay? So this is our 
real, wor real world example. So what does base jumping stand for? Base jumping, anyone know? Well, I'm gonna tell you. So base jumping is an acronym, B-A-S-E, and base jumping stands for buildings, antennas, spans, and earth, B-A-S-E. And when we say spans, we're actually talking about bridges. And when we say earth, we're talking about like cliffs. Okay, now what the heck is base jumping? Well, base jumping is kind of like skydiving. You can see I've got the little skydiver right here. Right here's my little skydiver. But skydiving is when you jump out of an airplane. Base jumping is an extreme sport, like one of those ESPN extreme sports. And base jumping is where people climb up to these high locations and then they jump with a parachute. They jump off the top of a building. They jump off the top of like a cell tower antenna. They'll jump off the top of a bridge. They'll jump off of a cliff. Um, I may show you an example in class. Normally when I'm teaching this, I show a video of base jumping and the students usually um, uh, enjoy it. So I may show that to you in class. Okay, now this is an extreme sport that people do. Um, they actually will go to these really high locations and with a parachute and they jump off and they do that for an adrenaline rush. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other reasons, but one of the things they like is the adrenaline rush um, and they free fall and they free fall for a while and then they pull the cord on their parachute and the parachute opens, right? So here's our little base jumper and he's flying through the sky. Um, he's got his parachute, he hasn't opened his parachute yet. Um, so they enjoy doing that. Now, what does that have to do with math and functions. Well, there's actually an equation um, for free falling objects. And the reason we would want an equation for this is because the people that do this base jumping, um, most of them don't want to die. Most of them actually want to survive and uh, they want to be able to do it again. So they need to know uh, how far they can free fall before they have to open their parachute, right? So if you're free falling through the sky, if, if you free fall for too long, you won't have time to get your parachute open and that won't be a good thing, right? So this, this function right here, this is a function um, and this is what it stands for. The distance, so D over here, the distance that you fall in a given amount, I think the NT got cut off um, by our little picture here, that you fall in a given amount of time is calculated using a function. So this really simple function right here, um, people that do base jumping and skydiving, they can use this equation here, this function to help them figure out how far they will be falling um, before they have to open their parachute. So let's go ahead and we'll do some calculations here so you can get an idea. Okay, so um, we're going to input some time. Okay, so T stands for time, and we're going to figure out how, fall, how far you would fall. This is without a parachute, so you're not using a parachute. So we're going to figure out how far you would fall. Okay, so we're going to plug in into our um, equation. We're going to plug in one second, two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. So in our um, in our equation here, if we plug in, so here it is right here, negative 16 T to the second power. So T is time. So we're going to plug in one second, but it's to the, we're going to square it. So it's one squared. So negative 16 times one squared, that's one. So in one second, you're going to fall 16 feet. So minus means we're falling. So you'd fall 16 feet. Okay, well, you might not be thinking, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, now watch what happens when we plug in two seconds. We're gonna plug in two seconds. And now two to the second power is four. Negative 16 times four is 64 feet. Well, that's approximately a five 
uh, five floors in a building, like a five story building, right? So, neg so 64 feet is approximately five floors. So if you can think about that, let's count one, well, two seconds is 1,001, 1,002. So in two seconds, if you're free falling, you just fell five floors, five stories. Okay, watch what happens in three seconds. In three seconds, three to the second power is nine. So 16 times nine. So 144 feet in three seconds. Let's count it, 1,001. 1,002, 1,003. So in three seconds, you would fall approximately 12 floors, 12 stories, okay? So if you were standing on the top of a building that had 12 floors and you jumped off without a parachute, you would hit the ground in three seconds. All right, and then four seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. In four seconds, you would fall approximately 256 feet, which is approximately 21 floors or 21 story building. So if you think of, if you've ever been to Las Vegas and you see those really high casinos, um, the, the, the hotel, casino hotels, so 21 floors, okay? So that gives you an idea. All right, now, real quick story. Um, I have a brother and he, um, a long time ago was in the army and he was in what was called the 82nd Airborne. And the 82nd Airborne, you, you may know someone that's been in the 82nd Airborne or the 101st Airborne. And in that it's special forces in the army and airborne means they learn how to jump out of airplanes and they get trained on how to jump out of an airplane and then land on the ground and they've got their gun and their weapon and their they're packed and they're ready to go. So they, they bring the soldiers and they'll drop them in um, by airplane. So my brother learned how to do that. And one of the things that um, he has told me about that experience is, so they go to what's called airborne training school. So they have to go to um, it's special forces. They have to get trained on how to do it. And they have to do several jumps. They first start, um, they learn how to jump um, off of a platform and they jump into like, you know, a big cushion, kind of like a, a big air pillow um, that you would see like firemen use. And so they learn how to do that jumping off a platform, but eventually they have to go and they have to start jumping out of an airplane and they have to learn how to do that. And on their last jump, so before they graduate from the airborne uh, school, the last jump that they have to do is a night jump. They have to jump at nighttime. Now, think for a moment, why would that be uh, a scary thing to do if you're jumping at nighttime? Okay, you can probably think you're jumping at nighttime, it's dark, and you can't see the ground, right? You're up in an airplane, and you can't see anything. They usually pick a night where there's not a very bright moon. And so you've got to jump and you can't see anything. So how do you know when to pull your parachute? Because they don't want anyone to die. Um, so the way they know is they have to count because you can't see the ground. You can't see how close you're getting to the ground. You can't see how you're traveling. So what they do is they count um, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then at the 1,003 is when they pull uh, the rip cord and that opens up their parachute, okay? So just a little quick story on that. Um, so those are called uh, airborne uh, soldiers. They learn how to jump. Okay, so now um, let's move on. So we have a function. This is our function right here. I tried to give you a real life uh, function of something that actually has an impact on your life. A lot of the things we do in here, you might think, oh, I'll never use that. Um, but this um, is a way that you measure how fast or how far things will fall. Okay, so you can see here's the distances and here's the seconds. Okay, so this is our input and over here was our output. Now, we are going to take uh, our input and our output, and we are going to list those 
um, as a relation. Okay, so we're going to list them as pairs. So one, we input one, we get negative 16, so and so forth. So let's list them as a relation. One is with negative 16, two is with negative 64, three is with negative 144, and four is with negative 256. So when you list them like this, that's called a relation. We've already covered that. When you list them like this, that's a relation, okay? All right, so let's move on. Um, now, a data table, a data table. So a data table is um, a table that's made up of these ordered pairs. So this is a relation, and now we're gonna put them in a table. And a table um, is just taking the ordered pairs and we're gonna rewrite them. We're gonna rewrite them like this. So I'm rewriting the time with the distance. Okay, so this is kind of like, like a T chart. We've already learned how to do this. Normally we use the variable X and the variable Y, right? So one is partnered with negative 16. Two is partnered with negative 64. Three is partnered with negative 144. And four is partnered with negative 256. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, give you a concept, a way to remember this, this idea of ordered pairs. Um, this is something that I came up with that seems to work really well for students. And I want you to think of, think of them as like dance partners. Okay, so think of them as like dance partners. So one is dancing with negative 16. Those are dance partners, right? Two's dancing with negative 64, three's dancing with 144, and four is dancing with negative 256. Now I actually, I want you to even think, I know many of you have participated in a quinceanera um, or you've been to one and you've observed them. And there's this, you know that, that when the dancers come out and they're all partnered up, there's a special name. You guys know it. It's called the court of honor, right? That court of honor. So I want you to think, I know it sounds kind of corny, but I want you to think of these pairs as dance partners. And one is dancing with negative 16. Negative 16 is not dancing with anyone else. Two's dancing with negative 64. Three's partnered with one negative 144 and four is partnered with negative 256. Okay, so these are ordered pairs and I want you to think of them as dance partners, like a court of honor. Okay, now we have some more uh, notes. We have a few more pages of notes, but I'm gonna um, stop this video here and I'm gonna make a, a second video um, that we will continue on the notes. So. Um, which you'll, you'll have to watch as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one, and then I will start the next video. Okay, so I will see you guys um, in just a few minutes.